Thank you, John. Um, you know, tough deal, tough, tough season, tough game, tough Saturday. Um, you know, you, you sat here and you think, how are you going to put a positive spin on two and six and a and a forty nine nothing uh, loss? And and you really can't. I mean, it, Bill Parcells, uh, when he was coach of the Jets, said years ago, "You are what your record says you are." And uh, right now, we're just not a, we're not a great football team. I mean, we our kids are practicing hard. You know, they're they're going out there and. Uh, for the most part, give, trying hard. Um, you know, at times when you're getting beat that bad, you know, it's easy to give in. It's easy. It's easy to quit, and uh, and we have to guard against that. I mean, to be quite honest, with something that we're we're fighting and we're trying to coach uh, against. The biggest thing that I'm trying to do is, as the head coach and the leader of the program, is is to show up work at work and and keep continue to work and continue to recruit and continue to coach the kids that we got hard. And uh, you know, try to show up early and leave late, and and uh, and be positive with everything that we're doing. I mean, that's the only thing that I know to do. Uh, you want your so you know your leaders or your upperclassmen to be the same way. The thing I'm trying to tell the seniors is, you know, you've got three weeks left. You know, I told the juniors after the game, you basically, you know, you got three weeks left to set the tone for what you want next season to be. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily talking about on the scoreboard or with wins and losses, although that is important. I'm really talking about the attitude from within the team. And uh, one of my concerns Saturday was, you know, is how hard uh, did we play. After watching the tape, I actually felt better about our effort than I did Saturday when I was at the game. Um, Saturday at the game, I felt like we, we lacked effort. There were times we looked, we looked like we were running away from the running back. There were times where you know, we didn't even try to make plays that I thought we could have made, and that was very disturbing to me. After watching the tape, I'm more concerned that, you know, when you play, we started six freshmen on defense and five on offense, and there's a part of me that wonders, you know, with Carson Newman and the effort that we put out there, and then Pembroke, the effort we put out there, if somewhere in there we've just kind of hit a little bit of a, of a wall, and um, I hope that's not the case. I hope we get our second win with that, because we still got three games left. We're facing an excellent team. Probably is them or Wingate's probably the best teams we've played this year. Newberry will be a, a very good team. Excellent quarterback, uh, good runner, two excellent receivers, big up front, athletically very, uh, you know, defensively they're very athletic, uh, very sound in what they do schematically. Uh, Going to be a very, very tough game for us. Then you go on the road to Brevard, who you know they were one of the two teams that were picked below us in the league. You know, but they they run. They run the option and they're going to give us some stuff. And we got to keep our morale at a high level so that we can compete in these last three weeks. And then you got the team that was picked first in the league, Natal, the last game of the year, you know, on senior day. So, uh, you know, my big thing right now is let's crank it up. Let's have a three week season. Let's give it all we got these last three weeks. And if you, if you come out, whatever your record comes out as, at least let's show the character that we have, you know, and that's, that was my concern on Saturday. I thought we didn't show that at times. Um, after watching the tape, I think we just got overwhelmed. We got ate up a few times. I mean, we got swallowed up by big people who just pushed us off the ball. And then the running back was a big kid who we had trouble tackling. I mean, I came in Sunday and, and did weights with Flick every, for a half hour on every kid. And I mean, we got, I mean, our starting Will linebacker is 181 pounds. <laughs> I mean, so we're just, you know, we're really, we're really, really fighting it there. And he's a great kid. He's a freshman. He's giving us all he got. Hard to be mad at him because he's, he's playing as hard as he can. It's just, you know, he's, he, got, he got ate up a little bit. And then I'm using him as an example, but I could, I could pull a million guys out like that. Um, one thing I will say is we did play Saturday without, how do I say this, our top, you know, our top two running backs in the depth chart coming in the year were, were Calvin and Nelson. And I think Cal or Nelson had, what, two or three carries Saturday. And that was a gift for me to give him those. And, uh, and Calvin didn't, isn't playing, he's done for the year. So we're out our top two running backs, our top three receivers coming into the year didn't play. You know, so when you have those kind of injuries on offense, you're going to struggle a little bit. I mean, if I think of, you know, you take any team's top five, five of their top six or seven skill guys out of their lineup, you know, they're going to struggle a little bit. I think we got a lot of that going on. Uh, that's not an excuse, it's just, it's just the facts. And then we're playing with a lot of kids who, who lack confidence because they haven't had the success. Moving forward, I still think we're going to be a very good football program here. I'm very, I'm as confident now, as crazy as this may sound, as ever. I just know that we need to grow up a little bit. We need to add a little bit more talent. 
and we will be as good as anybody in this league real soon. I want to be, I want to compete for a conference championship next year, which sounds crazy because everyone's killing us this year. But I really believe you get the six or seven guys that are hurt back. We had a few mid-year guys and have another good recruiting class. We'll be very, very, very good. Just right now, we got to find a way to battle for these next three weeks. Um, I mean, it just is what it is. You know, I'm coming to work every day with my head held high and going to coach them hard and have never lost, never had a losing season as a head coach. You know, we struggle with that a little bit in my household. My, yeah, but, uh, but, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I talked to one of my, like I said, I talked to one of my good friends. He's one and six and going through the same thing. You know, I talked to a couple other buddies. Then I got to talk to my cow buddy last night for an hour on the phone and, you know, they're, they're ranked six in the country. And you're like, geez, oh, is you guys, <laughs> you know, which I'm happy for them. It's, it's great. But I really believe this was, this was long term, this is going to be the best thing. For, for Lenore Ryan and for me personally and for our staff. And, and I, I'm, I really believe that. That's how I go to sleep at night, when I do go to sleep at night. You know, next, any questions? All right, Coach, so over the past, over the season, you've faced three teams now that are gonna be ranked. Mm -hmm. um, how, is your kid, do your kids still feel motivated um, going to verse those um, those tough opponents, even though they're young, they're young squad. Well, you think they would be, you know. I hope our kids. I, I keep talking to them about quit worrying about the results and be more concentrate more on the process, you know. And I and I've always believed that, you know, if we would just. And I don't believe we think that way at all. I think young kids look at the result, and and I've had great results, you know. I, I was I've been in the Final Four. We've won conference championships. Uh, we've done all those things, you know, flipped the Concord around. And we never talked about wins and losses. We never talked about we got to win this week's game. Or we've always talked about, you know, the process of what Tuesday's practice meant or what this weightlifting session means or how important going to class and living life right is. We've always been process oriented. I think young kids generally are more result oriented and they look at all the things you're talking about looking at, like this team's record or this team's quarterback or where we stand statistically and you know they look at all that and when you're a little bit older you realize that that doesn't that isn't what it's about it's about doing things a certain way playing at a certain level you know practicing at a certain level and you know as, a, as an older coach and I didn't realize this when I was a player but you know when you get older that if I just do this this and this right that the result will come you know the ball will go in the basket if I you know if I follow through and square up you know if you're always result oriented you get in trouble so I think our kids look at that way more than they need to and I think that's part of being you know inexperienced and not having been there enough you know I think if they once they go through this a little bit and they realize that you know if you do this and this the result comes then they'll quit looking at that and just go play ball and that's really where we're at we're so caught up in that that adds fear to me because you look at it and go oh god these guys are great and our record's bad and you know, we haven't done this, and then it creates anxiety and it creates fear. Where if you would just think that my job is to go one, two, three, and throw an out, and my job is to run an out, if you would think of it in terms of the of the actual task that you've done a thousand times, you would be you would be successful. But you get caught up in all the other stuff, and you know they got rabbit ears out there. There's Messi's boards, there's Facebook, there's Twitter. They hear all this noise that we didn't have to deal with when we played, and you know you try to keep that out of out of your locker room, but it's. It's there, and it's not just there for us. It's there for everyone. So everyone's got to deal with it. Okay. Um, you talk about the injuries that you have, especially on offense. Um, you got a few on defense too. Mm -hmm. Do you think that adds into maybe the anxiety your players feel throughout, the, especially these last two weeks? Sure, it's killing us. I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses, but you know, we have Rodney didn't play at free safety, and he's been he's probably an all league type player. You know, Duggar hasn't played this year. He was freshman of the year a year ago. He didn't play. You know, he, he's a great corner. You know, I think he's a kid who's got a future maybe playing past college. You take, you know, he'd be your kick returner. He'd be your punt returner. You know, those are, so now those positions are going. Marcus Kincaid made all league a year ago at strong safety. You know, he's not there. So there's three all league players in the secondary who didn't play Saturday and were replaced by three true freshmen. You know, and the one, the backup for, the, for both spots was, oh, by the way, the other kid who starts as a redshirt freshman. You know, and the backup for two of those spots is a true freshman. So now you take you take those three spots plus the kick punt returner. That's five spots. Now those three true freshmen who are playing the secondary really should be playing kick. T you know, they should be running down on kickoff and being punt return guys. And now they're being replaced by three guys. So you see how it multiplies out. I mean, it's like eight or nine or ten positions. And then you know, at receiver. 
you take out two guys that were very much vertical threats. You know, they they didn't. You know, TJ and um, and Demarius. You know, TJ's had played like, since like week two. He made All American two years ago, um, or week three, whenever it was. Demarius got hurt in the first scrimmage. You know, he had like nine catches for 180 yards in the first scrimmage, and he was going to be a big time guy over the top. You take those two out and you replace them with Alec Philpot and Jaquay Mitchell, who both get hurt at Tuesday's practice last week. You need to one of them practice, and you, you just see where you're, you're struggling. I mean, you just, you know, I look out there and don't even know who our lineup is half the time. We're trying to put certain kids in because they're good at blocking other kids because they run this route well, and it's, uh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate even bringing it up because it sounds like an excuse, but it's what we are going through. It's part of where we're at as a program right now, you know, so. And Mike Lopez called a cross dog split, uh, and we were in right by the running back and hit the quarterback, and the running back carried it for like 30 yards on second or third and 17 or whatever it was. And he looked at me and went, that's where we're at. You know, it's just we haven't learned to break down, and we will. You know, as long as the – my biggest concern right now is morale and effort and confidence moving forward. You know, how do I, how do I keep that in the program? And it's we talk about it constantly. And, we coach them hard. We're doing some fun things at practice to try to fix it. I talked to one of my buddies who's going through some stuff, asked them what they're doing. And that's where we're at. Like, like next year, I'm not concerned because those players will be back healthy and wide recruits, and that'll take care of itself. Right now, I'm concerned with how's the morale moving forward so that we can keep the arrow pointing up. Yeah. I don't think it's so much of an excuse. It's just the learning curve. Um, for the most part, it's just got, they got to gain that experience. Yeah. Um, you, got, you got Newberry coming up, traveling to Newberry. Mm -hmm. um, got a top 10 elite quarterback. Yeah. Um, what have you seen from him in his game um, from, what, from what you looked at so far? Uh, uh, he's great. Have... I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's what the quarterback at Limestone will be in a couple years. You know, that, that very, you know, elusive. Uh, but what he is is he's a senior now, right? He's a smart kid. I mean, you can see when you watch tape from a year ago, there were times where he would run when he didn't need to or maybe force it when he didn't need to. He doesn't even mess with that anymore. He throws it away. He's learned to play another day. His patience is back there. But when you're a freshman, the clock in your head at quarterback is beating fast. And everything seems like it's flying. When you're a senior, it's so slowed down. And, you know, and each year that clock slows down and slows down. I remember being a freshman quarterback, and, man, I thought half the guys were rushing me and the other half was running away from me. And that's what it looked like. When I was a senior, you know, even really my sophomore year on, it really slowed down. You know, you just need to, you could tell he saw a lot of football. He's been in that pocket several, several times. Um, two years ago, we played Slippery Rock, and they had a kid uh, last name Barksdale who was player of the year in the PSAC. And what they did on offense is almost exactly what Newberry does on offense. And that kid reminds me a lot of the kid you're seeing at Newberry. I think the kid Newberry's a little more polished, a little, you know, he, he can make the plays, but he knows when not to make plays. And, uh, He's an excellent player, and, and he's surrounded by really good players. He's not the Lone Ranger on that deal now. I mean, they got, I mean, at number 19, one receiver is phenomenal. They got a couple guys and a good back, and they're big up front. And that's the way great offenses are built. I mean, they, they've got it figured out. Last question here. You got three more games left. Um, what are you looking for out of your team? Um, just from an effort standpoint? Yeah, I just want to see, I would like to see us play the last three weeks without any fear. Fear of failure, you know, fear of, of, of what's going to happen. You know, we don't have fear as far as physical fear, but we do have fear of, man, we got to live up to something that's in our head. You know, you look at Little Ryan in the last 20 years, they really had a four or five year run of being good. You know, and we keep, everyone keeps referring to, well, we've been really, and I'm like, nah, not really. You, we were really good for like four years, five years. So what are we, I keep telling this group, what are we so afraid of? You know, Coach Clifton said something to me in pregame, and he said, uh, he said, I don't understand it. He goes, but my experience been in this league, about every five years, it's like you got to start over. He actually used some different words, and we, we talked about it. And, and we never really got to elaborate as to why he felt that way, but I look at it, you know, and, and, you know, and I read an article about Wayne State, how they kind of had a hangover, you know, after the national championship team. And, you know, I saw us at Cal kind of go through that a little bit. You know, staying on top was much harder than getting to the top. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. You know, we're starting all over from, from that little run. And, and I do think getting on top is much easier. Having been there, I felt like getting there was much easier than staying there. One of the things I was proud of when I was at Cal was we, we sustained it for a long period of time. Now, I look back, that seven straight conference championships that we won there, I don't remember three injuries, you know, and, and – 
And if Pete doesn't get hurt, my first year as the head coach, we're probably in the national semifinals that year. But we got a major injury. And uh, then this year here, we've had, oh my God, you know, just, and maybe it's, you just have that year every now and again. Everyone I've talked to who's been in this business for 20, 30, 40 years coaching, they have seasons like this. And I'm hoping we get them all, all the way this year. So moving forward, we could be, we could be great again. Yeah, it's a awesome question. You know, I, I, I think a couple of times in that game, we went high on him and he just drug us, you know, and then, you know, we talked about that and, you know, like at 22, his thighs were like this. And one thing I would say is if, if you ever stuck your head in there on a guy who's running like that, you know, it doesn't, I think we got beat up physically. I mean, it, it the week before against Wingate, that kid was a big, big, two of them, big stompers and, and uh, we went in there. I mean, once Rod went real low on the kid and broke the kid's ankle the week before against Wingate, and he came up a couple of times and did that, and the kid bounced off of him this week. I mean, so that's something that, you know, we've obviously addressed. We do tackling drills, I mean, daily. We don't go to the ground with it daily, but we do it daily. We get those, those tackling dummies, the, roll, the things that roll out, and we go low on them and tackle them, and just getting to do that. It, what I see that's more important than that is gang tackling. You know, all of us get there. He's a big kid. We ain't gonna bring him down one at a time. You know, what's our what's our pursuit? You know, how do we get more people there to to help? You know, the first guy could hang on until the rest of the team gets there. And all the great defenses we had at California, that's what they did. They ran well and gang tackled. When Mike was here and the great defenses he had here, if you really watch it, and I coached against those teams, they gang they ran well which helps you get there, and they gang tackled. You know, it really isn't. In this day and age, with the way offenses are spread out, you shouldn't be able to tackle guys one on one. I mean, you generally don't. You know, that, I mean, and we don't, we have no explosiveness in our offense. We've got to, you know, we've got to work the ball methodically down the field, four yard runs, five yard outs, and eventually we bog down because we never have, you know, that big run. You know, we never have the over the top post. It's just not there people wise right now. And it makes, so we eventually, you know, kind of mess it up. These, these other teams, you see them making those big plays. So, you know, we to me, our team speed isn't great. So we need to to get there to pursue. We do all the pursuit drills we did everywhere else I've been. We do all the tackling drills we did everywhere else we've been. You know, it's not, you know, we're not doing anything different than, like Brian Kelly's two and five right now. You know, three years ago, he's in the national championship. I guarantee he's coaching the same way now as he did then. It's just, you know, sometimes, some years, you're, the stars don't line up right for you. And uh, your job at those times is to keep working and keep believing in what got you there. And that's what we're trying to do. What pressure are your quarterbacks facing with those injuries, especially in the receiver, um, in the receive, receiving um, position? Our quarterbacks? Yeah, well, what kind of pressure they're facing, like, especially with the time and getting new receivers on? Um, yeah, it makes it really hard. You know, it, it's, um, I can remember 1990 with T. McGee was our tight end and we called 74 wide choice and he would run up and lean in and push and I knew when he pushed to throw it out because that was his body language to know where we were at. We were on the same page. And I could tell you every quarterback receiver combination I've ever had, they had that connection. You know, we really don't have that because we, we don't have a set lineup. You know, we're just, we're almost searching, you know, offensively. and. You know, it's nothing against the receivers, but, you know, one kid's hook route's always a little different than the other kid's hook route. We teach them all the same, drive it up to 14, put down weight, and come back to 12. But Alec runs it a certain way, and this kid runs it a different way. Just for them, one, and all exactly all the same, what, height, weight, speed. You know, so there's, there's a lot of that, just them being on the same page. And a lot of your accuracy issues are that. You know, this guy curls it, this guy comes back down the stem. So I throw it back down the stem, he curled it, I'm behind him. And then you factor in, you know, the quarterback play in and of itself. You know, when when they're struggling, you know, and we, we played both of them Saturday and, and they both they both struggled at times and you know, you know, I don't necessarily know people don't understand that, hey, maybe the kid was supposed to cut out and he threw it in. Or this time the kid did it right, but he thought he was going to curl it, so he missed it. Or the, the right tackle was in his face, so he missed it. Or he just missed it, you know? <laughs> I mean, so it's, it's a little bit of, of all those. And the problem you got is when you got a redshirt freshman quarterback or a junior who's always been an option guy playing, they need great people around them to help them make, look better. Or the other way around. You need a great quarterback who makes the new people on the outside look better. And right now we've got, we're new everywhere. So it's, you know, the flanker struggling, but that's normal. 
you know, and the, this guy struggles, that's normal, and the quarterback struggles, that's normal. You can't have it all at the same time. And, and it's my 22nd year, I've never had that. It's never, well, I should say, my first year coaching at Fairmont State, that group went three and eight, and they were all freshmen, sophomores together. Two years later, they were conference champs, and a couple of them are in the Hall of Fame now. So I've, I've went through that once, but, but since then, I've always been pretty fortunate that we were at least veterans somewhere. You know, when Pete was a junior, Lollick at Cal, we had great receivers, NFL type kids, and he was unbelievable. The next year he was a senior, we had all new receivers. And they one of them made all American, but they were good players, but Pete kind of carried the ball there. You know, the next year they were all kind of young together, and then the following year they grew up together. So I mean this is par for the course. It's just it does make it hard though. It makes it hard as a play caller. You know, I'm super conservative, never have been, never ever been. Always been accused of being too aggressive. You know, now I'm I'm, well, I'm conservative for a reason, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I go to practice every day and I'm like, we're not capable of doing that. So you want me to call it? I mean, we could call it and it ain't going to work, <laughs> but, you know, so it's just, it is what it is. Coach, I had not memorized the box scores, but it seems like so often we are moving the ball. Mm -hmm. We kill ourselves with penalties. Sure. Is that, is that new kids? Is that, how do you address? A that? lot of them are our holds, you know, and like like what, what you're really looking for as a coach is you don't want any pre-snap, post-snap penalties. You know, that's just, that's nonsense. Post-snaps, you're being selfish and, and you hit someone late or did something, you know, rain your mouth more than you're supposed to. Um, pre-snap is you're not being disciplined. We've actually been okay with pre-snap, post-snap penalties. It's during the play, you know, it's almost like you know, sometimes you play, if you play hard defense in basketball, you're going to get some fouls called on you, right? If you box out hard, you're going to get some, well, that's kind of where we're at. You know, we get, you know, we get some holds called on us. We're playing hard in there. And, you know, you watch the tape, like, ah, that ain't a hold. But it was a hold. They call it one, you know. And then, you know, defensively, sometimes you're, you know, your pass interferences, which we haven't got a lot of those. But, um, you know, those are just playing hard. You almost, you don't live with them, but you accept that that's part of the game. Um, but it's really killed us. It really has, and we had a third and one on like the 25. We had about a four-yard gain, and they, you know, they called a hold. And I mean, I watched it. I don't know who they called it on. You know, I mean, I got, you know, I get the penalty report, and I'm like, well, I don't see it there. But, you know, it's you're watching the video in slow motion, and you know, sometimes the guy's running, you see the little jersey tug, and you throw the flag, and it's, you know, it's kind of tough. But in some of them, we've held. I mean, you know, I'm not blaming the officials on on every call, but the, they, those kill, and we can't overcome them. Like third and two, we could get third and 12, there it's really, it's really hard for us. Do you feel like as young as you are, that a group of leaders is emerging that you can count on, like going in the last three games, but into the off season, yeah. that, that there's a group kind of emerging that's gonna carry us through the next sure. two or three years? I do, I do, I think, and I, and I really hope so. I mean, a couple of those secondary guys, that I'm talking about who, who got thrown in there sooner than they should have, I think are going to be phenomenal leaders for us. You know, I think, I think the two linebackers that are starting, both as true freshmen, are going to be very good leaders. Now, the one kid's really quiet, but the other kid, you know, is, is kind of outspoken. Uh, we got to shore up the D-line moving forward. I think we got some really good DNs. Johnny Nolan's a redshirt freshman, and I think he, he's a vocal kid. I think he'll, he'll be a leader. We got to get some interior guys. To, to, and we got some guys in the program that I think could be it, but they haven't got to play it. You're not taking Chris out to put them in just yet. Uh, you know, offensively, I mean, Nelson's, you know, really a smart, smart, smart football player. I mean, heck, we could line him up at receiver and he knows what to do. Uh, kind of a quiet kid. You hope he can. Jared, you know, is, is a redshirt freshman quarterback. You would like to see him start being who he can be instead of being passive with the whole thing. You know, he knows what's going on really well. Um, you know, I always say that people will follow if you know where you're going. He knows where he's going. He's just not, he hasn't, he, he hasn't played with confidence this year. And some of it's, there's a reason he's not playing with confidence. And some of us, he's just not playing with confidence. And uh, so you hope that, you know, I saw Jared Ferguson go through that as a redshirt freshman quarterback. He threw 19 interceptions. You know, when he graduated, he had 103 career touchdowns in a championship. You know, I saw Brian Harmon go through that at Fairmont State where he didn't say a word his whole freshman year. He was like a, he was very passive. His sophomore year he makes all league. His junior, senior, he's player of the year and he's in the Hall of Fame, you know. So I've seen quarterbacks go through that, but my conversation with him is just like, 
it was with those kids is you're at a crossroads now. I mean, you may not be the starter moving forward if you don't, if that light doesn't go off. If it does go off, then you got a chance to be special, you know, and I think fear is a good motivator, you know, so that's, that's, and there's another dynamic in there because he's, he's my son, but he's getting a lot, you know, I'm, I'm fine with, he's fine with that. I mean, that was part of the deal when he turned down other offers to come, you know, play here is you got to understand this could happen. And, and uh, that's, that's the way the quarterback position is. You, you get to play two guards, you get to play three receivers, you get to play one quarterback. I mean, it just, it is what it is. And we got a really good freshman who I love and we'll push for that position, you know, come spring. Jared's got every advantage. He's going to have X amount of starts. He, he's ran this offense in high school, you know, but he's, you know, he's at a crossroads with that. But once, if that light does go off, then you're going to see a tremendous leader and player. If it doesn't go off, then someone else gets the spot. A couple of receivers, I think, got a chance to Quay Mitchell, you know, who who's, could be really good. And we got a couple special tight ends, maybe three. You know, it's just a matter. And Jaleel Roberts is as good a leader as I've ever coached. He's a junior, and uh, during the game, he was going up down the sidelines and saying, I'm playing the last two quarters. Who's going to play with me? You know, and I didn't hear a lot of guys saying anything, anything behind him, but at least he was, you know, trying to lead. And he leads by example. Anything else? I want to thank you guys for coming. It's been, uh, you know, it's not, it's not fun losing. You know, we're not used to it. I don't like it. Um, you know, when, when we were winning all the games, I said, I'm not worried about our record. We're going to keep the same process task oriented and when we're losing the games I'm going to feel the same way that way you're not so caught up into what's going on what's important now is which is winning what it means what's important now is we go out and and we have a good fun productive practice and hopefully that could lead to some stuff in the game I don't know how we went from Pembroke competing as hard as we did for a half and in the second half you know we competed hard but struggled to what you saw the last two weeks sometimes it's as simple as it is sometimes you get beat and uh you know, I don't like that, but that you can fix that. I don't want it to be between their ears. You know, we can fix the arms and legs. We just I don't want it to be in their heads. So that's what we're working at, and uh, we'll continue to work at. So I appreciate it, and we'll give a good effort this week, I hope. Thank you.